Okay, conservation of momentum, uh, this time in two dimensions. That means we have to keep track of the vectors. So we're still looking at the law of conservation of momentum. So initial momentum has to be equal to the final momentum, right, or before and after. So again, here is uh, my before and here is the after. That means this vector here, this momentum vector, has to be equal to the sum of these two. So really what we're doing is drawing a vector diagram. So the sum of this vector plus this vector has to be equal to the initial momentum. Right? So this vector here makes an angle of 36 degrees. This vector makes an angle of 54 degrees. And the initial momentum was 0 0.200 kilograms at 6 meters per second. And over here, there's still 2 kilogram, 0 0.20 kilogram masses. This vector is traveling at 4.85 meters per second. And then this vector, uh, we know the mass but we don't know the velocity. Okay. So now that we have our vector diagram, I can see that using the sine law, I can solve for that unknown quantity. Right? So um, what we would have is A over sine of A. Sorry, let's make this a lowercase a and then b over sine of b. So on the a side we have 0 0.20 times v over sine of 36 and that equals 0 0.20 times 4.85 over sine of 54. And what we find is that unknown velocity is 3.52 meters per second. Right. So we've been able to use our law of conservation of momentum to realize that these two vectors added together have to be equal to the initial momentum. And remember, we're talking about momentum, so we can't just add the velocities. And then now that once I had my vector diagram, I can use... Uh, the skills that I've already developed in adding and subtracting vectors to solve for this unknown velocity. Okay, let's take a look at a more complicated example. So suppose we have two masses this time. Here's a four kilogram mass and here's a six kilogram mass. And let's say the four kilogram mass is traveling to the right at two meters per second and the 6 kilogram mass is traveling at 3 meters per second, but it's traveling at an angle of 60 degrees with respect to the horizontal. So those two objects collide, and after the collision, um, the 6 kilogram mass is traveling off now at an angle of, let's say, 30 degrees, and its speed has been reduced to 2 meters per second. What is the velocity of the blue mass? Okay, so now we're going to have four different vectors. So I can't draw a vector diagram, so I need to break this up into components. So I can do conservation of momentum in the x direction, and then do conservation of momentum in the y direction. So in the x direction, what we have is a 4 kilogram mass traveling to the right at 2 meters per second and a 6 kilogram mass traveling at 3 meters per second. Uh, but I only want the x component of that, so I'm going to add in cosine of 60. And on this side, I'm going to have my 4 kilogram mass 
with some unknown x component to its velocity and the six kilogram mass traveling at two meters per second but I need to add in the cosine of 30 this time. So I have one equation and the only unknown is this x component to this object's velocity. And when I solve for that I find that it's traveling at 1.65 meters per second in the x direction. Then I take a look at the y direction. Okay, in the y direction, this momentum vector has a component of zero, so the only one I'm interested in is this first one. So six kilograms uh, times three meters per second times sine of 60. And that should be equal to uh, the four kilogram mass times the y component of its velocity plus the six kilogram mass traveling at two meters per second times sine of 30. So I get a y component now of 2.40 meters per second. So I have an x component and a y component and I can find the velocity vector here which is going to be this vector right? because I figured out the x and the y components so I can now find the velocity of this object uh, using Pythagoras. So obviously the x component squared plus the y component squared and I take the square root of that, what I end up with is this object is now traveling at 2.9 meters per second, and I also need to know this angle, and I use tangent uh, to get that it's traveling at 55 degrees above the positive x-axis. So I'm still using conservation of momentum, but now I'm breaking each vector down into its components. Okay? You can always break vectors down into their components and look at each individual direction separately. So you can solve conservation of momentum diagram or questions with a vector diagram or with components. Okay, so hopefully you're going to try some of the questions from the textbook, and if you have any uh, problems, you can ask me in class.